Hi everyone, welcome back to Winging It. This is block nine in our garden quilt project. We're making a quilt on a garden theme, a block a week. And if you haven't seen any of our videos so far, I will link a playlist at the top of the screen so that you can catch up. If you don't want to make a quilt, don't worry. Each block works really well as a piece of standalone textile art. And these videos are intended to give you lots of different ideas about how you can use embroidery and applique and scrap fabrics to make lovely things. There are lots of people approaching this in different ways. Some people are doing wall hanging, some are doing books. So just take the ideas and you do you. I thought I'd just start by taking you around what's on my table. So I'll come to the block itself in a minute. I've got some scrap fabrics from my colour scheme. So I've got some solids and some patterns and some spots as well. I've got some bond web. I've got a range of threads. I will detail the colours that I use in the description below, but just to show you very quickly, I've got my black, which is Anchor 403. I've got my dark green, which I've been using for lettering, which is Anchor 683. I tend to use Anchor threads. I've got my white, which is Anchor 001. I've got a mid brown, which is Anchor 480. A darker green, which is 258. My light green, which is 255. My pink, which is 027. I've got my red, which is 46. My blue, which is 130. And my yellow, which is 298. I've also got a white heat erase pen and I've got a coloured one as well. I've got my water soluble pen and I just happen to have, for no apparent reason, an air erase pen. Now these can be really useful if you're doing something quick, but you do need to be aware when you're using these that they erase in air. And normally they say, it takes about seven days for the ink to disappear but I do find often that if it's a fairly warm place the ink will disappear sometimes before you've even finished but we'll give it a while today. I've got a pencil as well and I've got my embroidery scissors and some paper scissors for when we're cutting a bond web. I've got some pins just out of shot and I've also got my iron. We've also got some embellishments. Now this is pieces of selvage. I did say that I don't throw anything away. I really like working with these. I love the print registration marks. It tells you the brand often and the pattern and you get these little circles of colours that are used in the print. So this one's only got one colour because there's only one colour used in the print but sometimes you get a lovely series of lots of dots of different colours. I quite like working with salvages. Often they have textures at the edge. Sometimes you get ones like this that don't fray and you do get these little holes along the edge which I don't mind. They are the holes used for where the fabric is gripped for printing and you can make use of those holes. So we're going to use a bit of that in our piece today. And I've also got some of this daisy trim. I think I've seen this available in Hobbycraft on rolls. I just bought this by the meter from eBay. And if I just hold it on an angle, you can see that this is a sort of embossed braid. So it's got some texture on it that forms the detail of the daisies. And I quite liked this when I noticed it and thought it might look nice scattered around our quilt so that will come in handy later. I do have a pattern for this week's block and it's available on our website. I'll put the address at the bottom of the screen and I'll put a direct link in the description below. It's £1 to download and that's just a cost that helps me cover the cost of making these videos and helps to support my channel. 
So I've already made my backing block and I didn't film this bit because we have done this process several times so far in this series of videos. If you aren't sure what I've done here, we covered this in detail in week three and I will link that video at the top of the screen. It takes you through how I did my measuring and how I did my cutting. Quite simply, I've made this out of two pieces of fabric. So the top part, you will need to cut a piece of fabric that is 15 centimetres by 20, and that allows you a one centimetre seam allowance. So this top section is 14 centimetres deep. The bottom section is seven centimetres by 20, and with that seam allowance, that will give you a six centimetre section at the bottom. So I've marked the seam allowance and pinned the two pieces of fabric together, right sides together. And I've just gone along and stitched it by hand in back stitch. Then I've pressed the seams open so that they're lying flat on the back of the block. And that gives me a really crisp straight line at the join and a flat surface to work on. So I've used my dark green at the bottom. It looks much darker on camera than it does in real life. And I've got my wide striped fabric at the top. So this is an eight millimeter stripe. And if you want something similar, that's what you're looking for. And the only problem that I have when I'm tracing is at that seam allowance, it we've obviously got a double layer of fabric so it's hard to see through so what you can do is just fold that seam allowance back to allow you right down to the join let's try out our airy raised pen you can get these all over the place they're not expensive so i'm going to start by putting my template and fabric over my light box and making sure it's lined up and then i'm just going to trace over all of the lines of the bird houses so i've got a guide for positioning my applique pieces. First thing I'm going to do is put my posts in. You can see that the error raised pen has faded loads. This one's almost gone already. So this is where I thought our salvage might be useful. So I want to cut a piece that is about twice the width of the post. The post is conveniently about the width of just that white strip. So I'm just going to eyeball it and trim a little bit of the yellow off just so that it's closer to the size that we need. Just using the spots there as a guide. And I'm going to pin this so that it lines up with the center of that post so I've got the right side down and I want it to overlap the grass a little bit and the right hand side of my strip is lined up right down the middle of the post and I'm going to pin that in place and I'm just going to back stitch this down so I'm starting at the grass line I'm coming up with my needle just above the grass line working back one stitch to the join and then I'm rocking my needle forward a stitch length beyond where my thread first came out and then I go back to meet that first stitch so to close the gap up rock forward again a stitch length beyond where the thread is coming out and then go back to meet the previous stitch and that essentially is how you do back stitch so we're always working two stitch lengths forward and one stitch length back so I've just stitched along that and finished off the thread and I want to turn back the yellow edge of the fabric to the halfway mark on the fabric so I'm, I'm basically folding a quarter of the width of the fabric back in on itself and just to be sure, I'm just going to run my iron over that just so that that fold is really crisp. Now I'm going to fold it back to the stitch line. So I'm pulling that fabric as far as it can go away from the stitching. And what we've created there is two turned in edges. So we've got turned edge applique here through just folding. I'm just going to press that again so that it doesn't move. 
So we've got no raw edges on display now, and we've got a post that is half of the white part of the selvage and half of the pattern. So it's just got that little flash of colour. I'm just going to put, put the pin in just to be sure so that it doesn't move. And now I'm going to use an applique stitch to attach this securely. So I'm going to bring my needle up through both layers so it's just into that yellow part of the spotted fabric. And then I'm going to tuck my needle right up against the edge of the yellow fabric but go down through just the backing fabric. And I'm just checking on the back to make sure that my seam is sitting correctly that it's flat and open so that I'm not creating lumps and bumps in my quilt block. So then I bring my needle back up a little further along through both layers and go down through just the backing fabric. And you can see I've started rocking my needle now rather than doing it in two motions. And it actually the natural rock of the needle will help you get very even stitching. So I'm just going to put a few stitches in to make sure the post doesn't move and then I can remove that pin so that the fabric is lying flat and doesn't have a pucker in it. So now I can just work all the way along to the top and I just want to make sure I've got a little bit of overlap into the shape of the actual birdhouse so that I'm not going to have a raw edge on show once I've put the rest of my applique on. When I get to the end, I'm just going to use a quilter's knot to secure that thread on the back and trim it off. So there's our first post and now I can trim that off at the bottom. I'm not going to worry too much about the raw edge because it will be covered over at the end. So I'm just going to snip that off at the bottom, just in line with the edge of the grass. I've just shave a tiny little bit more off that. And there's our first post. So we've got a little bit of white, a little bit of colour. So I'm going to put the other two in and then we'll come back and look at the next stage. So I've put my posts in, I've trimmed them all off. These are actually raw edges. You can see a little bit of fraying on that one. It will be covered, so we don't need to worry too much about that. So our next stage is to create our pieces for our birdhouse. So I've got my template back here and my light box and I'm just going to get my bondweb ready. We've used this loads of times. It's a really nifty product to help you with applique. You can see through it really well. I find that bondweb does fail over time with washing. The more you wash it, the more the glue washes away. So this is really just a step to help position our pieces and secure them while we're adding our overstitching. I don't think I would ever just use Bondo Web anymore. Now when we're tracing our pieces we want to keep them separate so I'm tracing each one separately and moving the paper. And I'm just numbering the pieces so that I know which bits go with which house. So I thought we'd start with this one in the middle. So I'm just going to roughly cut out the pieces for that second house. And then because I'm going to do each one on different fabric, I'm going to cut the pieces out and separate them from each other. I'm just leaving it roughly cut at the moment. We want to apply our bond web working from the background to the foreground so I need to do the shape of the house first then the roof and then the window and I want to be conservative with my fabric so I'm just tucking that shape right into the corner I've got the glue side of the bond web down and the paper side up and I'm working on the wrong side of my fabric holding my iron in place for about 10 seconds and that melts the glue and fuses it to the fabric 
So now I can cut it out precisely along my pencil line. So that means the glue is going to go right to the edge of the fabric and not leave any flappy edges. I'm using my paper scissors here because obviously the paper backing is still on the bonder web and I don't want to blunt my embroidery scissors. The other advantage to using bonder web is that the glue is going to stabilise the fabric and prevent our shapes from fraying while we're working with them. So I use bonder web for a number of reasons, not just to attach the pieces, but also to make sure we get a really nice professional finish at the end without lots of tattered edges. So I can bring my block back in and just position my little red birdhouse shape inside the airy rays marker lines that I've put on. That helps us get our position right and then I put make sure it's glue side down and I clamp my iron down in place for about 10 seconds again and that remelts the glue and fuses the piece to the backing fabric. So now I'm just making the little window in exactly the same way. I've got a little piece of black and I'm just positioning that. I'm eyeballing it a bit because I can't see through anymore and thought it might be nice to do a green roof for this one so I've just got a little scrap of green fabric and I'm popping that one on and I'm just going to repeat that process for the other shapes and now I'm going to add some over stitching I've got two strands of green here and just like we've done before I'm just going to add some simple running stitch embellishments around the bird houses I thought this one might be nice to do something of a stitch sampler on so I'm going to use different stitches in different places but running stitch is going to tie it all together. It's also going to echo other panels that we've done so we did our floral garlands last week and we used running stitch there and it just sort of picks up that stitch detail from another block and brings it into this one. So running stitch, really simple, you just go up and down and make sure the spaces between your stitches are slightly smaller than the stitch length themselves. It just gives a really nice finish. So now I've got two strands of white thread and I thought it might be nice to do some blanket stitch overlapping the edges of this roof. So I've brought my thread up right at the corner of the birdhouse and I'm thinking in terms of little rectangles. So I've gone diagonally down to the bottom right corner. So my thread starts in the top left corner of my rectangle. I take my needle back down in the bottom right corner and rock it so that it comes up in the top right corner. And make sure my needle's coming up inside the loop that I've created and pull through. I do have a full stitch tutorial on blanket stitch and I will link that video at the top of the screen. So I'm working these fairly close together and it's just creating a sort of striped effect and the only thing you need to be really careful of is that you allow enough space on your stitch so that the stitches don't pull on the fabric and lift it away from the background fabric. So over here I'm going to do some cross stitches along this uh, base of this left hand birdhouse and so I'm just making a row of diagonal stitches and I'm trying to make sure that they're evenly spaced and all going at the same angle. So I'm just working diagonal stitches. It's like running stitch, but it's on a slant, I suppose, rather than in a line. And then when I get to the end, I'm just going to work back in the opposite direction. And it's easier coming back because you can link the top of one stitch to the bottom of the next one along. And that will give you your evenly spaced crosses still working in white thread here. I'm just running stitching 
around this one again. I've got two strands of red here. So I'm trying to pick out the fabric colours and use those in my stitching so that we've got a bit of balance of colour all the way around. I've got two strands of blue for this one. And I thought we could play around a little bit with the posts and I'm going to do fly stitch on this one. So I've come up on the left hand side and I'm taking my needle down directly across from that on the other side of the post on the right hand side. And I pull through to leave a loop. Then I'm going to come up right in the middle of the post, but a little further down. And I'm making sure my needle is inside the loop that I've created. And that means that when I pull through, the working thread catches the loop and pulls it into a V-shape. So then I make a straight stitch directly down so that I've got a sort of Y-shape now rather than a V. Just got a bit of a tangle there. So it pulls through and creates that capital Y shape. And then I want to come up again on the left in line with the bottom of that first V and pull through. I go straight across and down with my needle on the right. And I'm going to bring it up at the end of that straight stitch, right at the bottom of the, of the Y of the first stitch. I'm going to make sure my needle is inside the loop again and pull it through and then we've got another v-shape then i make my straight stitch to move my next stitch down a little bit and come up on the left in line with the bottom of the second v-shape now that blanket stitch video that I linked earlier also has a full tutorial for fly stitch. So if you're not sure what I'm doing, do go and watch that and it will make a lot more sense. I'll go through it a lot more slowly and carefully. So over here, I thought I'd do herringbone stitch and I will again link it a tutorial at the top of the screen. This is similar to cross stitch, but we're going to add in a little tiny back stitch. So I've come down diagonally from left to right, and then I work a tiny stitch up vertically before I make my cross in the opposite direction. I love this stitch. I think it's really decorative. It's actually a, a very useful stitch for blind hemming. Um, but if you use the back of the stitch, you get this lovely offset crisscross that I really like. You can see there that I've just running stitched around the roof of the house on the right in two strands of yellow. And I've added some chain stitch down the centre of the centre post. So what we want to do now is cover up. The joins and those raw edges and this is where I thought my daisy braid would come in really useful. So I'm just roughly measuring the width of my block and cutting a piece of braid that's going to fit and I want to make sure that that central flower is centered on the middle birdhouse. I'm just cutting off any ragged edges and loose bits of thread and I'm going to pin this in place so I just want to make sure that I've got a flower right at the centre so that my braid looks even across the block and I'm going to put a couple of pins not too many because I don't want to damage this braid but I'm just going to put a couple of pins to hold it in place while I stitch it doesn't matter at all that the braid doesn't go right to the very edge of the block because we are going to join our blocks together. The very edges of the block are going to be turned into the back or when we put our quilt together so it won't show. So I'm just using normal machine cotton here and I'm going to stitch down every single petal. Now that might seem quite laborious 
but we need to keep in mind all the time that if we're turning this into a quilt it's an object that's going to be used and washed and I just want everything really secure. So all I'm doing here is coming up just inside the tip of each petal and taking my needle down just outside it with the needle tucked up really close to the edge. So it's an applique stitch again. Just tiny little stitches in white that are barely visible and that's going to hold everything really securely in place. So I'm going to go down the right hand side of the braid working round each flower to the centre and I'm going to work all the way down the right hand side and then I'm going to come back along the left hand side and do the same again and that will secure the braid really carefully. This is where we're up to so far. I realised that I'd forgotten to stitch down the windows of the birdhouse so I've just gone round and put a couple of stitches there. And the last little detail I want to put in is some flying birds and we're going to use the fly stitch that we use down here to put in those birds. So I've got a single strand here of my dark green and I've made my little V shape here and rather than doing a long straight stitch here I'm just going to hop just over the V that I've caught down and put a little stitch to hold the V in place. So I'm just going to put a few of these in so little V shape and then hop over it and anchor it down with a straight stitch. On the drawing there was some grass and I did have a go at putting it in but I actually quite liked it with the braid so I'm going to leave the, the strands of grass off. I really like this one, there's something about birdhouses that makes me really happy. So a nice simple one this week, I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have please do give us a like, it really helps out our channel, it helps other people find our videos. Can't wait to see your versions of the birdhouse block. Do share your panels at hashtag FSH23quilt and so that we can see all the birdhouse pieces together you can also add hashtag FSH23quilt9. If you have enjoyed this and want another birdhouse project I will link a video down here and I'll put a video up here that is best for you. If you're enjoying our videos and want to see more, we post every week and you could subscribe by clicking on our logo down here. It makes it really easy for you. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.